ether channel now in this section we'll talk about ether channel how it's going to help us in optimizing the network performance now if you just get back to the basic spanning tree features what we have learned in case of spanning tree whenever you add multiple links between the switches like take an example in this scenario i got some two links and if i'm going to connect two links by default automatically any one of the link will go into blocking state so let's take an example i got a switch here and then i am connecting four different links between the two different switches automatically it makes the remaining three links goes into blocking and it is going to forward the traffic only on that one particular link so let's assume that each link is 100 mbps links and any of these three ports will be in the blocking state and only one link will be forwarding the traffic as per the default spanning tree rules now my requirement here is i want to use all the four links for forwarding the traffic now if you want to forward if you want to use all the four links in general we 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 are not going to disable any spanning tree here but what we can do is we can combine these multiple links into one single logical link we can represent to spanning tree that these are not four links they are actually one logical link at a speed of 400 mbps so there are four links and the combination of these four links and all the four links will be forwarding the traffic without any blocking ports at a speed of 400 mbps at the same time it will not create any loops now this method we call it as ether channel or we can also call it as link aggregation we can also call it as or it is also called as port channel interfaces all or same now it is a method where we are aggregating the bandwidth between the layer 2 and layer 3 interfaces now once we create this logical link now we can use this link as a normal layer 2 interface for forwarding the normal switching traffic and also we can use it as a normal layer 3 interface where we can assign the ip addresses and we can we can use as a layer 3 port as well now at the same time it is going to increase the bandwidth utilization which means not not exactly bandwidth utilization it's going to increase the efficiency of the link by forwarding the traffic from all the four links and also at the same time it is going to help us in providing the redundancy in case if any one of the link fails still it's going to forward out of the remaining three links which means still your 300 mbps traffic will be forwarded now ether channel allows you to configure between any two same same uh, platforms like if you're using cisco cisco switch we can we can do that ether channel and it's a it can also be implemented between a cisco and a non cisco switch as well so let us see some of the basic points uh, like if you want to configure ether channel ether channel is going to load balance the traffic over all the links in the bundle so we'll see the load balancing options what are the what are the actual load balancing options we have and we can aggregate up to eight links to combine into one logical link and and it can be like you know any port speed like we can either use 100 mbps ports or we can use 1 gig ports but we need to ensure that all the four links or eight links should must must be on the same speed and the same settings that is duplex settings and physically they they not compulsory that they should be side by side these are the some of the guidelines or the rules for ether channel but they must have the same same speed and duplex settings and they should be on the same vlan and they should have some common configurations so that is something the major condition you need you need to know before you configure the ether channels now we can use this ether channel either as a layer 2 interface or a layer 3 interface okay so port channel in general we call this as a port channel is the logical interface which is created after combining multiple physical interfaces now to configure ether channel there are multiple ways to do that like uh there are three different options we can use uh, two two major options we can say one is a manual ether channel now in case of manual ether channel manually we are configuring the ether channel by giving some options on 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 both the sides so whenever i am using on option it means we are using a manual ether channel on both the sides now apart from that manual ether channel we can also uh, negotiate the ether channel parameters by using some dynamic method and there are two different protocols which can be used there is something called pagp and lacp protocols a pagp stands for port aggregation protocol link aggregation control protocol now what these two protocols will do is these two protocol will negotiate the 
ether channel parameters to automatically form ether channel or to automatically combine the multiple links based on some parameters. Now let, let me just differentiate what is the difference between LACP and PAGP. Uh, PAGP is a Cisco proprietary way of enabling the ether channel. Now which means if you want to run PAGP you must be running a Cisco Cisco on both the sides. So if I'm running a Cisco device, if I'm running a Cisco device, I can go with a PAGP even if it is a Cisco non-Cisco also we can we can run. It's a Cisco proprietary. Uh, it, it, it runs only on Cisco devices. If you are running any non-Cisco environment devices, you cannot run PHP. Whereas LSCP is a standard way of implementing Ether Channel where you can run on Cisco devices as well as non-Cisco devices. So maybe I'm running any non-Cisco device on the other side or maybe a Cisco device, I can still run LSCP. So this is one of the major difference between these two. PHP is a Cisco proprietary way of implementation of the Ether Channel whereas LACP is a, it's a standard way of implementing the ether channel. Now apart from that one difference, there are some different modes which we use for the ether channel. Like uh, there are some different modes. If you are using, if you are using PAGP, there are two different modes which we use with PAGP. Uh, auto and desirable and the active and passive are the modes which we use for LACP protocol. Now this is for LSCP and this, these two options are for PAGP. Now the, let's try to understand the basic difference between this desirable and auto modes. Now this desirable and auto modes are more similar to the DTP modes in the trunking protocol. Like when I say desirable mode, desirable will actually send uh, or initiate the DTP messages. That's what we can say it is going to initiate the messages and also it will reply if anyone initiates on the opposite side. So whereas auto will not initiate, it is going to only reply to the TP messages and it will not initiate the messages. So let's take an example. I'm going to configure some ether channel. If I, if I want to use PAGP on this particular links and I want these four links to form a logical one link using PAGP protocol, then probably I, I should use either desirable, desirable on both the sides. If I use desirable, desirable, desirable will initiate the message and the desirable will also will reply and they will auto negotiate and they automatically form ether channel. So that is one successful combination we can say. And apart from that, I can also use desirable on one side and I can also use auto on the other side. Uh, if I say desirable, desirable will initiate the messages Auto will not initiate, auto will only reply to the messages and they automatically uh, negotiate and the negotiation will be successful and they automatically form ether channel. But if you use auto auto on both the sides, that is not going to work because auto will not initiate the messages and the auto will not initiate the messages on either sides, which means the initiation will not happen and they will not form the ether channel. So if you want to use PAGP, it is mandatory that either you have to use uh, desirable and desirable on both the sides or you must use desirable and auto on the other side. But if you are using auto auto on both the sides, it is not going to work. And even you cannot use desirable on one side on on the other side. On means uh, it's a manual, it doesn't work with dynamic. Now, if you compare the same thing with LSCP, in LSCP, the equivalent of desirable is active. So which means uh, just if you say active means it will initiate as well as it will reply. The equivalent of auto in LSCP mode, we call it as passive. And the behavior is exactly the same what we discussed. This active means it will initiate as well as it will reply. So which means either you can use active active on both the sides or we can use active passive on both the sides on one of the side, but you cannot use passive passive. So if you use passive passive, it is not going to work. Now there are there are different options we can use. Like uh, there are some successful combinations we can which which is going to work if you want the ether channel to work. Either you must use on 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 both the sides. If I use on 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 both the sides, we use as a manual ether channel, and the command is very simple. We just need to go to the interface range, and then we need to give channel and the group number, this number is actually the logical port channel interface number. 
So it is going to create one logical interface 12, which is a combination of these three ports, sorry, four ports into one logical port. And then if I say mode and question mark, it's going to provide me the five different modes. So either I can use on, on, or I can use desirable, desirable on both the sides, or I can use desirable and auto on the other side. This is successful combination. If I use auto, auto, it's not going to work. Auto, auto will not work. And the similar way, if you if you want to use, this is uh, using PHP protocol. And if I want to use LSCP, in that case, either I should use active, active on both the sides, or I should use active passive, but you should not use passive passive on both the sides. If you, if you, are, if you are using this mode, in that case, the switch will automatically understand that you want to use LSCP. So let, let's get into the command line and verify the configuration of this particular uh, ether channel. So let's let's go with ether channel here. So I got a diagram here. I got I got a switch one and switch two, which is uh, pre-configured. Uh, in fact, there is no configuration on this particular switch. And I got the command line on the switch one here. And if you verify show CDP neighbors, I got a switch one and switch two. They are connected on port number 21, 22, 23. 24 exactly the same way and apart from the connectivity changing the host names there is nothing configured on this particular switches so it's just like a blank configurations and what i want to do is i want to configure ether channel so let's let's go with different options here to configure the ether channel the first the first option i'll use pagp so let's go with pagp protocol and using PAGP, I'm going to run desirable mode on one side of the switch and I'll be using auto mode on the other side of the switch. Now, if you want to use LSCP, we should use active, active or active passive modes. So anyone for testing purpose, you can try with any one of this one. So we need to go to interface range, port number 21 to 24. So you can see there are four links. So I want to apply on all the four links. We can use channel channel there are two commands channel group we can directly use group and then we need to define the logical port number which it is going to create so let's say I'm using one two and then mode and once I give mode question mark you will you'll find some five different options now out of this I want to use desirable on one side and then exit just one command if you just you do show history I just added only one command on this particular port and let's go to the switch to command line on the switch to also I'm going to do the same thing interface range f0 by 21 to 24 channel group and then logical group number the port number it is locally significant nothing to do with the opposite side so you just say mode and the mode is auto now we can also use desirable that still works now for verifying we can use show ether channel summary now when i say show ether channel summary i, sh I will see the port channel 12 is created s s stands for it's a layer 2 interface and it is in use and the protocol for negotiation is used by pa pagp and these are the four ports which are which are present in this now if you if you want to verify there's one more command we can use show ip interface brief I can see this is a logical interface which is created on this on the switch one and switch two. Now, similar way, we, you can also try with some other options like if you want, we we can either remove this, and you can either use active on the one side of this, and we can use passive, or we can use active active on both the sides. That's going to work. Even you can try some on options as well. The same thing what I have in the workbook. So I'm I'm not getting into these options here anyway. So there's something very simple you can you can just go and verify on on those things. Now, the verification wise, uh, we have verified that if I give show IP interface brief, I can see my ether channel interface which is already created, and then whatever the changes you do on that particular port channel, let's say we can go to that port channel interface one two. And I can say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q, and then switch port mode trunk. And I can copy paste the same commands on the on the switch two as well. Let's go to switch two. 
the same port channel number I'm using. Now if I give show interface trunk, you can see port channel 12 interface is created as a manual trunking with the 802.1 QA encapsulation. And if I give show running config here, now you can see even though uh, whatever the commands we configured on the particular port channel interface, it will automatically apply on the physical interface. Now there is one thing we need to remember here is whatever you apply on the port channel interface, automatically those things will apply on the physical interface. But whatever you apply on the physical interface, that's not going to impact on the port channel interface. So that, that's one thing we need to remember. So once you make a port channel interface as a trunk port, automatically it is going to make all the remaining ports as a trunk ports. And if you go show interface trunk, show interface trunk, and even if you verify show spanning tree, you can see now spanning tree will see this particular port as one logical port instead of seeing them as as four different ports so and, and it puts all the ports in the forwarding state 